What's happening guys? So guess what I got in the mail just the other day? Uh, a friend of mine who gave me this print on demand mug. It says like a boss and it's got a little picture of me, right? This is actually my uh, Facebook profile picture right here. Now don't send me stuff, you don't have to. I'm not even gonna give you my address, but uh, I thought it was pretty cool. I helped him out a little bit. He's a friend now, so he sent me this and uh, he's still doing print on demand, still doing the um, AliExpress drop shopping and not print on demand. So, you know, I gotta get him off that train and, and not just on print on demand stuff, but you know, it, it's a nice gesture and thank you. So we are talking in this video about the call to action buttons. I tell you over and over again, hey, do not use those buttons. It's the way that Facebook's gonna trick you into spending more money. But I never actually told you exactly why you end up spending more money and why it's not a good idea. Well, this video, we are gonna cover two parts of why call to actions are not a good idea. Let's get started. First reason, the first reason that you do not want to use call to action button. It's because Facebook recommends it. And the number one rule of thumb is if Facebook recommends something you do, you do the opposite. Why? Because they want to make money. They want to, I have a previous video about uh, all the ways that Facebook tricks you, right? And in that video, I actually talk about call to action buttons a little bit. But this video we are, I'm telling you right now, the two reasons why you end up spending more money when you use call to action buttons. So first reason you spend up more money is it gives you a lot more clicks, right? And so if you know anything about optimizing ads, if you know anything about managing campaigns and scaling campaigns and keeping your campaigns healthy and, and uh, you know, increase budgets, decrease budgets and keeping things, you know, flowing so that you're profitable. If you do any of that, one of the metrics you look at is cost per click, right? Of course you do. I mean, I tell you not to, I tell you to, hey, just look at the max cost per purchase over seven days and that's it. That's what you should technically do. But I know you look at cost per click, okay? So if your cost per click is super cheap, let's say you're, you're, the ads with your call to action buttons are getting 40, 50 cent clicks. And let's say the ads without call to action buttons are getting $1 clicks. Double the price without the call to actions you're instantly gonna think, awesome, I'm getting a better performing ad. And here's why that's not true. Facebook is gonna optimize for more people, like, oh, more clicks, right? So it's gonna send you more people because it's easier to click on, but those people aren't gonna actually be the, the people that are gonna convert. And so you might actually end up getting lower conversions. Well, no, 100% you will, right? You will get lower conversions when you use a call to action button than if you did not use it, even though you're paying more per click without it. So let's say you had a 5% conversion rate with, without call to action buttons, and with call to action buttons, you get a two or 2.25% conversion rate, not even exactly half, you get less than half, and that's because the pixel's not optimizing as well as it could, because now you're letting Facebook, you're giving Facebook the chance to send more traffic that's untargeted. You wanna give Facebook, you wanna make it harder for Facebook to send you the correct traffic, and that way it's easier for you to know whether a campaign's working. Number one, lower conversions when you use call to action button. Number two, this is the part, this is like the, the reason that people would not think of, okay? So the second reason is it gives you false sense of stuff working. And what I mean by this is when you've seen all your super cheap cost per clicks, right? What's gonna happen is the rules that I tell you to follow, I don't know if you follow them, but the rules I tell you to follow is, hey, cut any ad sets over $2, okay? And let the other ad sets run. Well, what's gonna happen is if you have like 20 ad sets, right? And you let those ads run because they all follow the rule, you're ending up spending a lot more money than if you did not have a call to action. So you're giving Facebook more money up front because you don't know which ad sets are going to have a chance to actually be profitable and work and be you know, converting ad sets because they all look great. What you do not wanna do is have all ad sets look great. You wanna have very defined, 
hey, this ad set is, a, is looking like a winner, this ad set not looking like a winner. And what happens when you use a call to action button is all of the ad sets look great. You get 30 cent website clicks, 50 cent website clicks. Those are great numbers when it comes to call to action buttons. But I mean, with, with, with call, when normal ads without call to action buttons, but with call to action buttons, they all look great. And it's extremely misleading because now you let all your ads running thinking they're gonna convert, but they don't. And now you end up spending, you know, how many days you let the campaign optimize, three, five, seven days you let it optimize, and you're keeping all 20 of those ad sets running for that entire period, hoping that they're gonna start bringing you sales because you have all this cheap traffic, but it doesn't actually turn into sales, and you have all these campaigns that ad sets that actually reach your max CPP, which would have never reached the max CPP before, which is cost per purchase, by the way, which would never have reached that max cost per purchase before because you would have a different, you had your rule of cut off after $2 when not using call to action. So you're giving, you're making it harder for, for, for Facebook to send the correct people, which is actually raising your conversion rates because you don't have that easy button to click uh, in your, on your ad. Now you have your link, right? but that link only a certain amount of people will click. It's not it's super easy when you're scrolling the news feed, right? And you scroll and you scroll and scroll, the, the call to action button's on the bottom of the ad. It's super easy for people to click that button that's on the bottom of the ad with their thumb. But on a link, they have to scroll back up a little bit and then click it. it makes it just, I mean, these are small psychological things that make a big difference in your conversion. And when you've been running Facebook ads for so long as I have, you notice these little things and you see, you know what, call to actions are you know, bullshit. You shouldn't use them. So I'm like anti call to action buttons. Uh, and some people are like, what do you mean, why? It's just because I know from personal experience they do not work as well. With that being said, I just set up a campaign yesterday for my app and uh, I'm using call to action buttons. Why? Because I'm testing again, I wanna see Hey, is it the same? Is it true again, like now, compared to uh, you know six months ago or a year ago when I tested before? And so far from one day results, it's only been a day or whatever, but so far it's holding true pretty much where that same formula or the same statistics are happening where all the ad sets look great. So I have to let them run because I don't know which ones are going to be decent, right? And then, uh, then I have to just spend more money over the, five day period instead of being able to cut things early. So that's why call to action buttons are more expensive over the long haul. And when you're testing so much and when you're running your print on demand uh, campaigns and you're setting up design after design after design and you actually have a little machine going, every dollar counts. So if you're testing the $5 on PPE and you know your number's really good, you can actually get the data in about $3. You don't even have to spend the full $5, but you gotta know what you're looking for. And then when on WC, if you set it up correct, you can cut things super, super early. If you can cut things after $2, if, you, if you're good, right? And you've been doing this a while, you can cut things after $2 the first day. On the second day, you can cut things over $1.50 or $1.25. And then on the third day, you can cut things even more if it has no ad to carts. Now, this is a little bit more advanced management rules. I try to keep it simple if you're, if you're just doing it for the first time. But if you're looking at your data, you want to save as much money as possible. So that's why I do not think call to action buttons are a good idea. They just waste money, give Facebook more money. That's why they recommend them. So whenever Facebook recommends something, do the opposite. Say it with me now. When Facebook recommends something, do the opposite. Okay, let's, <laughs> that was good. If you did it along with me, that's cool. But uh, guys, a uh, little short video about call to action buttons. Hope it helps. Click the like button. Hit subscribe, notification bell if you love my videos, and I will see you on the next one.